Good morning, and welcome to worship at Lion Lake United Methodist Church. Our scripture lesson today is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. <clears throat> Jesus says, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we're concluding our sermon series on In the Garden. Past couple weeks, we've been talking about all of the uh, biblical imagery of gardens and nature and how that helps us connect with God. And today we're closing out this series by looking at this passage from uh, John where Jesus compares himself to an actual plant, to a vine. And this image that Jesus gives to us, Jesus is the vine. In verse 1, he says, I am the true vine, and my Father, God, is the vine grower. Jesus uses the image of him as the vine, as, and, and the God as, as the one growing the things. Vines would have been a, a common, especially grape vines, would have been a common sight in Jesus' time. People <clears throat> would have seen vines growing uh, pretty much everywhere they walked. People would have probably have tried to grow if they had any land at all. One of the things they would have tried to grow is grow grapes for, for wine. Uh, grape vines uh, grow by coming up from a center stem and then the branches branch out along trellises and that's where the grapes grow from. And, and for us, you know, who, who don't live in a as agricultural world or, or, or don't live in that climate, <clears throat> vine regions are sort of unusual. You know, you would go to Traverse City or southwest Michigan to see uh, wine growing, but in Jesus's time, the vines would have been a common sight, sort of uh, like a front garden would have been for, for us. And so Jesus uses this to, to give an example of his relationship to God and also his relationship then to us as disciples. So if Jesus is the vine, then Jesus is the, the source of our life. The, the theologian uh, Paul Till called it the ground of our being. The, the, the source that connects us to the ground, connects us to, to the source of everything. Jesus connects us with it and, and grounds us something beyond ourselves. I think this is an important thing, too. If we are the branches connected to Christ, we aren't floating around ourselves. Christ gives us something to hang on to, something beyond ourselves. So we don't need to worry about uh, being out on our own. Right? We don't need to worry about doing things by ourselves because we know we are connected to Christ. And Jesus also, as the vine, provides stability in a chaotic world. Provides that stability, that, that, that core, that, that, that rock solidness in, in a world that is constantly changing. And, and especially in our, in our world today where it seems like things change all the time. Jesus provides that grounding. So we aren't just flapping in the wind. We are grounded in something real. When uh, up at camp uh, that me and my wife help out at, uh, Teddy Bear Camp and Black Bear Camp up at Lake Louise, they, they have something called a low ropes course. And it's some obstacles that, that groups of people are supposed to, to go through together and work together. And one of them is sort of this giant balance beam. It's a, it's a giant, <clears throat> it's a giant boards laid out a giant platform and it's uh, and it has one uh, point in the middle that's a fulcrum and so if you step on one side it immediately goes to that side if you step on the other side and so uh, we work with the kids and trying to balance on this and you know as kids get older they're easier to work together but man when kids are 
are small, especially in elementary school, it's really hard because they're really squirrely and any movement can make it can make it go from one way to the other. And so we found that sometimes an adult has to place their foot on, on one side just to make things stable, to get, give things, give the kids a little stability so they can sort of figure out how to move around and how it, it changes. Otherwise, it's going back and forth too much that the kids don't even get it. And that's sort of what Jesus provides, that stability in this chaotic world, that, that grounding and something beyond ourselves and something that's stable. So if Jesus is the vine, then, in this passage, we are the branches. Branches, in that image, right, the, the vine goes up in the center, and then the branches spread out on either side, and that's the branches that then bear the, the grapes, the fruit. And the branches do a couple things. The first is they are connected to the vine. All right, in verse 4, it says, Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So Jesus here is, is saying that, that we are the branches and, and we don't do much good without being connected to the vine. Our ability to bear fruit, our ability to bear fruit for the kingdom of God depends on us staying connected with Jesus as the source. We don't go far as far out, we don't launch ourselves so far out that we lose connection with that source. I would argue some of the issues sometimes with Christianity is when Christians become disconnected from the source, disconnected from the teachings of Jesus, of love and reconciliation. It reminds me of when uh, our boys were first starting to walk. Both Michael and Samuel had this, we had this experience when they were first starting to walk, and they could uh, start to walk and run sort of on their own. And we'd be walking down the street, walking down a sidewalk, and, and Michael particularly would would run ahead because he all of a sudden had all of this freedom. He could move his body, and he didn't need to be uh, carried by an adult anymore. And he would run ahead. But then he would get to a certain point and he would look back at us to make sure we were still there and then run ahead some more and then stop and, and look back at us. It was important for him to, to make sure that he can stayed connected with us. Even though he had the freedom, he could have run anywhere he wanted to and we tried to teach him not to. Uh, he wa still wanted to maintain that connection, making sure that he was connected with us. And so... Our connection with Jesus is important. And so how do we do this? We do this through spiritual disciplines, through the, the means of grace that John Wesley talks about, through prayer and Bible study and worship. Those things keep us connected and keep us grounded. And in the chaotic world around us, when it seems like the world is moving so quickly, to spend time in prayer, to spend time in, in biblical study, to spend time in, in worship with others, is a way for us to connect ourselves to the source, as a way to remind ourselves of why we're doing all of this, who we are as a people, and whose we are as God's beloved. So branches stay connected to the vine, but branches go also go out and bear fruit. In verse 5, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can't do anything. And then it goes on and says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So being connected with Jesus uh, doesn't mean we just hang out there. It means we go out and bear fruit. We go out and, and bear fruit by abiding in Jesus, by doing the things that Jesus does. So we stay connected with Jesus, and then we bring that connection and that love to others. And how did Jesus love others? It says, abide in Jesus' love as Jesus loved us. How does Jesus love others? By figuring out what we have, by giving himself to others. Jesus loved others by pouring himself out and giving up himself to others. And so Jesus invites us to abide in that self-giving love and then participate in that self-giving love with others. And we do this by, by figuring out what it is that we have. What it is that we have. This could might be like material, literal material things, right? We have stuff that other people might need. But also I think it's 
about what we have in Jesus Christ, that we have communion with God, that we have a place of safety and reconciliation and peace and forgiveness, and we have a place of community, a place of community where it, it doesn't matter where we've been or what we've done, that, that we will be loved. And that's something this world desperately needs. It desperately needs places of community, places to come together across lines of race and language and, and political orientation to, to come together to do the good of the world. So figuring out that that is something that we have, that is a fruit that we can bear, and that invite others to share in it, to invite others to share in that love, in that, in that goodness. In the fall, we're going to do another sermon series about uh, how we might share that love, how we might share our, our good news that we have with others. But before, until then, I invite us to remain connected to Jesus, engaging in those spiritual practices, and then finding ways to invite others on this journey with us. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks that you ground us in the source of all things, but then you send us out to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Be with us as we do this work, God, we pray. Amen.